Hello friends, welcome to Susan and John MapTube. So, in this lesson, we continue our discussion on reduction formulae. Okay, um, this is actually continuation of the last three lessons in reduction formulae. The only difference which you will see here is, we are going to do a few problems related to definite integration. So, please write the question. Find the reduction formula for the integral 0 to pi by 4 tan to the power nx dx. We have done the same problem, but um, in that video, the limits were missing. Also find integral 0 to pi by 4 tan to the power 5x dx. So, we start like this. Let the required integral be i n is equal to 0 to pi by 4 tan to the power n x dx. Do you remember the method for tan? Yep, you are right. What do we do? We use a power n is equal to a power n minus 2 into a to the power 2. So, here we go tan to the power n minus 2 x into tan square x dx. Now, what we do is we convert tan square x into sec square x minus 1. Remember the procedure is still the same. Now, what we do is i n is equal to 0 to pi by 4 tan to the power n minus 2 x. Okay, now, what we do is we will split this into two integrals that is i n is equal to 0 to pi by 4. Okay, time to think. So, I am going back to the initial naming part. Okay. Are you able to see tan to the power n x is named as i n and remember limits are 0 to pi by 4. I can see the same thing, but the power is n minus 2. So, I think you already guessed it. This is i n minus 2. Okay, now this can be done in two different methods. One is I know that the sec square x dx is the differential of tan to the power n minus 2 x or a simple process is substitution method you put t is equal to tan x. So, that dt will be sec square x into dx that means this part will become our dt and our tan will become t. So, i n is equal to, ah, we forgot to change the limit. Look, the original limit belongs to the original variable x. So, I am going to write if x is equal to 0, t is equal to tan 0, that will be 0. If x is equal to pi by 4, t is equal to tan pi by 4 and that is equal to 1. So, the new limits are 0 to 1 t to the power n minus 2 dt. Now, we are ready to integrate i n is equal to t to the power n minus 2 plus 1 by n minus 2 plus 1 where t varies from 0 to 1 minus i n minus 2. Now, when you plug in the limits, you will see that you end up with i n is equal to 1 by n minus 1 minus i n minus 2. Now, this is the reduction formula because long back itself I told you, we are able to write n in terms of n minus something, the bigger number in terms of the smaller number. 
Now look at this, they have asked you to find something else. Hence evaluate I5. Come on, if this is In, what will be tan to the power 5x? Of course I5. Once more, look at this, if tan to the power nx is I n, then what will be tan to the power 5x? Of course, it will be I 5. Okay, so that is what we are going to find. First of all, I am going to hijack this. Ah, we forgot one thing, the ultimate integral. Now look at this, here we are uh, moving in steps of 2. So, if you start with any even number, for example, 8. 8 will become 6, 6 will become 4, 4 will become 2 and eventually 2 will become 0. At the same time, if you start with 7, 7 will become 5, will become 3, will become 1. So, if n is even, the ultimate integral i0 will be, what will be i0? integral 0 to pi by 4 tan to the power 0 that will be dx pi by 4 and if n is odd the ultimate integral is i1 i1 means 0 to pi by 4 tan to the power 1x dx and you know integration of tan x is log sec x so when you plug in the upper limit log root 2 isn't it? You can try it yourself. I skipped a lot of steps. If you want, I'll add that. It's from 0 to pi by 4. So, you're going to get log root 2 minus log 1. Log 1 is 0. So, we end up with log root 2. Okay, that's it. Okay. So, this is our I5. Now, applying our reduction formula, you can see that uh, I'll put one more color for you. Yeah. What will be I5? I5 minus 1 minus I3. Now, what will be this I3? 1 by 3 minus 1 minus I1. Now, what is I1? We already found log root 2. Done. So, 1 by 4 minus 1 by 2 plus log root 2 that is our answer will be log root 2 mm, this will give you minus 1 by 4 ok now write another question prove that integral 0 to pi by 2 sin to the power nx dx is equal to 0 to pi by 2 cos to the power nx dx. Also find the common value. This is very important uh, in the sense of its application. The result is very very powerful. I am not talking about the importance in your exam. But mathematically, this is something very important. Okay, so let's start. I hope all of you watched the videos, properties of definite integral. We did a lot of problems in properties of definite integrals. And if still there is someone who has not watched those videos, uh, please do watch. It will be a good revision for your examination. And I hope you remember the property integral 0 to a f of x dx is the same as integral 0 to a f of a minus x dx. I hope you still remember integral 0 to a f of x dx is the same as integral 0 to a f of a minus x dx. So, what we do is we start with the first integral 0 to pi by 2 sin to the power n x dx. Now, look at this. I um, will give you an example then we will talk generally. 
if someone gives you sin square x you know that it is sin x times sin x or it is sin x the whole square if we have sin cube x you know that it is sin x the whole cube if you have sin to the power 4x it is sin x to the power 4 so i hope you don't mind if i write this as sin 90 minus x the whole power n wait a minute sin 90 minus x is the result which you learned long back what is sin 90 minus x cos x so we end up with cos x the whole power n oh that is exactly what we were trying to prove integral 0 to pi by 2 sin to the power nx is the same as integral 0 to pi by 2 cos to the power nx dx the second part of the question also find the common value okay so now we proved that this and this are equal uh, you have to evaluate one of the integral that's it because they are going to have a common value okay i prefer to start with sin if you want you can do the same proof by starting with cos because they have a common value so no need for introduction i called it as i n you know the reason now think about it didn't you watch the videos related to reduction formula for sin and cos do you still remember the method okay we need sin to the power n minus 1 x times sin x dx now do you remember what we did long back okay we applied integration by parts so when we apply integration by parts we write the first function and integral of the second function integral of the second function is minus cos x by the way this is a definite integral so whenever integration is complete we have to put the limits minus integral 0 to pi by 2 derivative of the first function so n minus 1 if you want more explanation you can check out those videos reduction formula this will become n minus 2 into cos x and of course the same quantity now look at this something very interesting when you plug in the upper limit when you plug in the upper limit instead of our what you call argument x i can see we are going to get cos 90 cos 90 is zero zero into something will be zero similarly when you plug in the lower limit sin zero is zero so you are going to get zero for sure now here minus and minus will be plus integral zero to pi by 2 sin to the power n minus 2x and are you able to see cos square x here cos square x i am going to write 1 minus sin square x okay now i am going to skip a few steps i am going to distribute and i am going to change this into two separate integrals which you already saw in the previous videos so we get 0 to pi by 2 sin to the power n minus 2x dx Minus zero to pi by two uh, sine to the power n x dx and one n minus one is here. It should be outside over here. So we get n minus one here, n minus one here. I hope you understood. I skipped a lot of steps. I'll explain once more. N minus one goes outside. Let it wait there. cos x into cos x is cos square x cos square x is 1 minus sin square x distribute it distribute n minus 1 we get this okay so i n becomes n minus 1 you know who is this yeah minus n minus 1 into i'm sure you recognize this person i n 
Now, we cannot call this as a reduction formula because the bigger number is not in terms of the smaller number. The bigger quantity should be completely in terms of the smaller quantity if you want to call it a reduction formula. So what we do is a very simple process. We take it to the left side. Okay. Now, what is common to this? I n. Ah, here we go. We have the reduction formula. Now, <clears throat> we to still do a lot of things. First of all, let us write the ultimate integral. So, you know the fact you have seen so many times, whenever n becomes n minus 2, there will be two ultimate integrals, i0 whenever n is even and i0 means you have to go back to the question, put 0 over here, dx x x pi by 2. So, i0 is pi by 2 and i1 is integral 0 to pi by 2 sin x dx and you can calculate it, it is not a big deal, you will get the answer 1. So, here we go with the ultimate integrals. Yeah. Now, now look at this, now comes something very, 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 very important. So, look at this, we have a reduction formula. Do you remember in the last question, when we were trying to find I5, what you did was, you kept on replacing every n with 5. Later, we found I3 and how did you find I3? You replaced every n with 3. Now look at this, I am going to do something which might sound a little bit weird for you. Look, I want I n minus 2. Can you see? I want I n minus 2. So, I am going to replace every n with n minus 2. So, let us give it a try. n minus 2 minus 1, n minus 2, n minus 2 minus 2, okay. Now, I am going to apply the same rule. How do I find i n minus 4? replace every n with n minus 4. So, we are going to get n minus 4 minus 1 by n minus 4 i n minus 4 minus 2. Okay, we will keep on applying this. n minus 1 by n, n minus 3 by n minus 2, n minus 5 by n minus 4, n minus 7 by n minus 6 i n minus 8. Now, look at this. If you keep on doing this, if you keep on doing this, you know that there are two possibilities. One is we might start with an even power. If you start with an even power, then earlier I told you, for example, if you start with 8, 8 will become 6, 6 will become 4, 4 will become 3, sorry, 4 will become 2 and 2 will become 0. Even if you start with 100, the same things will happen, like what you call 100 becomes 98, 96, eventually 50, eventually 20, eventually 10, eventually 2 and 0. So, what I am trying to convince you is, if n is an even number, you will eventually end up with I4 into I2 into I0. We do not care about these things, but you have to understand eventually we will reach I0. If n is even. Now, similarly, if n is odd, the rule will be same. The rule will be same, but you are eventually going to reach I1. That is i n is equal to pi by 2. We calculated it earlier. If n is even, n minus 1 by n, n minus 3 by n minus 2, 
n minus 5 by n minus 4 dot 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 1 if n is odd. So, this is the reduction formula for 0 to pi by 2 uh, what you call sin to the power n x dx. This is very important. Okay, now, I will tell you the application. Look at this. You can evaluate this integral using reduction formula in a very efficient manner compared to beta gamma integrals. We learned the same thing in beta gamma integration. We learned the technique to evaluate such integrals in beta gamma integrals. But look at this formula. Can you see? We have an awesome pattern here. n, n minus 1, n minus 2, n minus 3, etc, etc, etc. Okay, I will tell you how. The answer will be 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1 and a pi by 2. Why pi by 2? Because we know the ultimate integral will be pi by 2 if we have an even power. Okay, I will give you one more example. 0 to pi by 2 cos to the power 10x dx. It is so easy. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1 and a pi by 2 provided you have an even number. Now, take a calculator and multiply. That is it. See, compared to our beta gamma uh, integration technique, this method will be much, much efficient when you evaluate sine to the power something or cos to the power something. Now, I will give you one more example. Suppose, we have 0 to pi by 2 cos to the power let us say 7x dx. So, the difference is it is an odd number, but look let it be even, let it be odd, the progression is the same, the sequence is the same. So, basically you are going to start with 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. And we know that the ultimate integral is 1. So, whenever you have an odd power, the only difference is you do not have to put pi by 2. That is it. So, I am going to wind up this video with this. So, I will be back with more videos. So, till then my friends, bye.